This is Jack Dennett inviting you to Maple Leaf Hockey Talks. Every time Shaq comes on the ice, there's a noticeable lift in action. Shaq has been storming around the ice, causing quite a commotion. So far, he hasn't had much luck around the net, but he's been the life of the party. Fans like to see him take off like an express train, and they never know when he's going to be derailed. It is the unexpected that always happens with Shaq, and the fans can't afford to take their eyes off him for fear of missing something. Oh, I, I enjoy the crowd. Uh, I say that I might take a, a running jump or something like this, or, or really barreling down the ice. I would like it if we were up a few more goals, and then I could try other things. Eddie Shaq, the great entertainer. And you'll find Eddie puts plenty of fun into talking about his career. Yeah, I was uh, working as a butcher in Sudbury, and then I worked for Dominion Stores, and then I had a chance to go and play hockey, and I was 14 and a half. I was making around $60 a week at the time. I was going to drop down uh, $40, but uh, I was looking forward to the uh, uh, getting up in the big time. But the first step to the big time didn't pay too well. We started out at the Guelph, and... They said uh, $20 a week, and you had to pay 15 for room and board and 5 to spend. Eddie spent five hard-working years in Guelph, then moved on his first pro training with Providence. For three years, he shuffled back and forth between Providence and New York. He didn't have to work as a butcher anymore, but he still had a few beefs. When I went up to New York, uh, there wasn't much uh, of a chance for me to, to prove myself because all he wanted me to do was check uh, Ed Litzenberger or... Uh, uh, Morris Richard and uh, Gordie Howe, and uh, I don't care who you put out there uh, checking these fellas, that uh, all you're doing is getting the stick and eating wood, and, and uh, all they keep saying is, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, when I went out to sign my contract, they didn't say, uh, well, you, uh, you ate four uh, sticks and, and three pucks, or all they wanted was uh, to put the puck in the net. Like most things about Eddie, his career up through the leagues was unusual. First of all, I was traded to Detroit for 24 hours. And while he was figuring that one out, he got a phone call he didn't believe. We didn't have a phone at the time. And I read Sullivan walked over to the house and said I was traded to Toronto. I said, yeah, great, you know, really great. Who, who for? Uh, Pulford, Keon, and uh, Mahalovich? <laughs> he wasn't traded for them. He joined them. My first year, I think I scored 15 goals with the Leafs. In the years that followed... The Leafs rode the crest of a winning streak, and Eddie earned his reputation as a man who played for laughs as well as goals. But when the hard times came, Punch decided he needed more goals and less laughs, and Eddie was sidetracked to Rochester. Going down to Rochester, I thought it did me the world of good. I felt that I had to do the best I could and get my confidence back. I was losing a little bit of my confidence in hockey, and with anyone... If they lose their confidence, uh, it takes a while to get it back. His confidence came back fast in his first game with the Rochester team. The first shot I get, boom, it goes in. And I wind up getting another hat trick. Well, I said, if this is going to keep on like this, I'll have 250 goals. I'll just pass that hall like nothing. <laughs> but in Toronto, the goals were still scarce, and the laughs even scarcer. The fans let the club know how much they missed Eddie. I was laughing because they weren't winning, because I wasn't there. I didn't know they were there saying, we want Shaq. The management got the message, and Eddie continued to get the message to the fans. I have my own people up in the stands, and I get them going on this, we want Shaq, because uh, Mr. Imlach sometimes doesn't hear it, and then I keep giving them a plug every so often, and... Uh, behind the bench, you can probably see me sometimes. I give it a stretch and I give him a wink there. I'm ready, punch. I'm ready. Send me out. But in spite of the clowning, it was a more serious Eddie Shack who came back from Rochester. He scored 26 goals for the club that season. His 20th goal was a highlight. Your 20th goal, uh, it, it was a big thrill for me. The Rangers are leading 3 to nothing in the third period. Shaq, Kelly, and Pulford are out on a player change. They're all set. The puck is loose. Pulford recovers and cuts back to his own blue line. Pulford overskates the puck. Vaughn picks it up. He skates down the right wing. Shaq and Kelly with him. Vaughn's over the blue line. He shoots, he scores! Shaq will get credit for that one, and it is his 20th goal. 
Shaq off balance, skated in front of the net as Bond shot. And the puck deflected off the blade of a stick and hopped over Manny Ego's arm. That puts the Leafs back in the game. The 20th was a thrill, but even more than that, Eddie remembers a surprise assist from Red Kelly. A thrill for me last year was when, when uh, Red Kelly passed me the puck and uh, there's no goalie in the net. All guys that pass the puck to is me. Well, I got so shook up about it that so I took a backhand and I missed the, the net and hit the post and it ricocheted off the boards. Uh, the other players were just, they, they were stunned and they were just standing watching and I finally got the puck again and shot it in. But uh, this was a, a real something to me. I, I uh, maybe wouldn't bother anybody else, but just to see Red pass me the puck like that where, where Red wasn't scoring that many goals at the time, this is what kind of a guy uh, Red Kelly is, is, that you have to uh, take your hat off to a man like that. He's called the clown prince of hockey, sweet daddy shacky, and a lot of other things. But no matter what the nickname, Eddie is the biggest crowd pleaser in the league. He makes you remember hockey as a game and a lot of fun. Thank you.